For this presentation, I'm going to talk to you about the muscles of the knee joint. And I'm going to use mainly this modelled knee here, because it'll be a lot easier to explain. So let's start off with the quadriceps. So the quadricep muscles, so these muscles are mainly to extend the knee, but also one of them, which I'll discuss shortly, also attaches to the hip, onto the AIIS, which is called the anterior inferior iliac spine. And then that naturally is involved in hip flexion. So what we've got here, so we've got the vasti group. So we've got the, the vastus lateralis, naturally on the, the lateral side. So this is the left leg on here. Medially, we've got the vastus medialis. And potentially, we've got some oblique fibers coming down here, known as the vastus medialis oblique. Directly underneath this muscle, we've got the vastus intermedius along here. And then this one will be known as the rectus femoris along here. And then this one I mentioned earlier will go to the AIIS and it comes down. So where these muscles comes down, so this will be known as the quadricep tendon as they blend in along here called the quadricep expansion area. So they actually blend in to this tendon. The patella actually sits in the middle. So it's a sesamoid bone. And then we've got this structure here. It's mainly known as the patella tendon, but medically it's known as the ligamentum patelli because it goes from bone to the tibial tubercle, bone to bone. So in theory it's a ligament, but typically it's known as the patella tendon. The muscles are particularly involved in extension of the knee. The vastus medialis is involved in what they call the, the lock home mechanism, which is when the knee goes into full extension, we have this um, change of position where when the knee bends, if I show you on this one here, so when the knee flexes, okay, so when it bends, basically the tibia will turn internally in respect to the femur, and the femur will turn laterally in respect to the tibia. So we have this unlocking mechanism. So when the knee goes into full extension, then now the tibia will be turning externally as the femur turns internally to lock home. So the vastus medialis, in particular, will be responsible for that end phase extension. And if you were to palpate the medialis on end phase, then you'll feel it's more active. The vastus medialis oblique fibers here, it controls the position of the patella. On the lateral side, we've got the tensor fascia lata attaching to the iliotibial band or tract along here. And then this structure comes down to an area on the lateral tibial condyle I'll show you on this one. There's a little black mark I've marked on here. And then this will be known as the tubercle of Gurdy. Hence the word Gurdy's tubercle. Okay, named after a French surgeon called Nicolas Gurdy. So the IT band comes down and attaches onto here. But there's an area of the lateral side of the knee that the IT band can irritate. And I call it like an iliotibial band friction syndrome. So you get this like irritation around here. It's more of a compression issue and you get pain forming along there. So the IT band, it basically stabilizes, um, well, the tensor fascia lata is a muscle that connects to it. And the TFL is a hip flexor. It's a, a rotator of the hip internally, but if you think of the word, it tenses the fascia lata. So when this muscle tightens, shortens, contracts, it tightens this fascia lata here, so it increases the tension of the tibia into the femur, so it provides like lateral stability along here. Posteriorly, we've got the hamstring muscle group. So the one on the lateral side, which goes to the head of fibula from the ischial tuberosity, would be known as the bicep femoris. And we've got a long head and a short head as part of our answer word biceps femoris. And that muscle is involved in knee flexion also can assist in hip extension and because it's on the lateral side it can then externally rotate the tibia in relation to the femur. On the medial side we've got two main muscles. We've got the semitendinosis which will be the tendon here which is part of this area called the pes anserinus. So the semitendinosis will come down so the pes is the foot and the anserinus is the goose foot Okay, so it's known as the, um, well, duck foot, 
goose foot. So there's like three fingers that will attach to that medial side of the tibia. So the semitendinosus will come down to that. So the semitend deep to that will be known as the semimembranosus. So the two muscles, semimembranosus will go to the posterior aspect of the medial tibial condyle. So these will be involved in knee flexion. Again, of the ischial tuberosity, hip extension. And because they go medially, they can also rotate the tibia medially in respect to the femur. We've also got the gracilis coming down to the knee. The gracilis is one of the adductors because it attaches here to the pes anserinus. It can also assist in knee flexion. Obviously, it's going to be an adductor and it can internally rotate the tibia. The sartorius, I wouldn't call it a knee muscle. It's more <clears throat> a muscle from the hip to the knee. It is to place the leg into what we call the tailor's position. So where this attaches to, it can assist in knee flexion, similar to the gracilis and tibial internal rotation, even though it's involved in lateral femoral rotation, okay, of the hip joint in here. There is a muscle posterior, similar to the hamstring, but this is known as the gastrocnemius. So on this side, we've got the medial gastrocnemius, and on this side, we've got the lateral gastrocnemius, and these two are involved in knee flexion, but they're also involved in plantar flexion of the ankle. Deep to the structure within the popliteal fossa, we have a muscle called the, you can call it the popliteus, some call it popliteus, depends on, on the anatomy teacher, if you like. And uh, that muscle will go from the lateral side of the femoral condyle to the medial side of the tibial condyle. Okay, so it basically will cross over like this. So it's deep structure within the popliteal fossa. So this muscle, so what it does is that when you bend the knee, it initiates unlocking of the knee. And then when it bends, it will basically rotate the tibia medially to unlock on the femur, which is rotating laterally. So you have this unlocking mechanism. So if you bend the knee from, say, uh, where are we? From this position. So if the popliteus is located here, coming across, if I do it this one, so from this side, so the lateral femoral condyle to the medial tibial condyle across here. So when the knee unlocks, the tibia will medially rotate as the femur is laterally rotated. Okay, so that's what we call an open chain perspective. Whereas if I'm standing and bending, it is now my femur that is laterally rotating as my tibia is medially rotating. So they call that a closed chain exercise. So basically, popliteus can either bend the tibia on the femur or it can bend the femur on the tibia. Sounds quite complex, and I guess it is to a point. So that will be the main muscles of the knee. So anteriorly, the quadriceps. Laterally, we've got the IT band. Posteriorly, we've got the hamstrings, the gastrocnemius, and deep is the popliteus. And medially, we've got the pes anserinus area, which is again one of the hamstrings, and the gracilis, and also the sartorius. Thank you for watching, and I hope you liked the presentation.